I've been using uh, the Logos Bible software for a few years, and, and when I started exploring some of the packages they had, I noticed they had an Anglican uh, library package. So I just caught, they're, they're based out of the Pacific Northwest where I was for a few years. So I actually went up to the Logos headquarters, got to know some people up there, and started using the Anglican Studies library along with all the biblical commentary, and found out about this this resource and then contacted Ben, who you're going to hear from in about 15 minutes. And what's really fun about what's happening is that they have fabulous biblical studies. So we, we've got a few different things that we need to do as clergy. Prepare for homilies and dive into scripture. And I was going through mine, and I think I have about, I don't know, 60 commentaries, commentary series just from the package I have. So, so sermon preparation, but also some of the things where I might want to read the Anglican heritage. And so I asked, I called Logos, and they said, yeah, we, we'd like to come down and, and talk about this. So they're actually going to be giving us a discount for, for us at the clergy conference. And I wanted to get someone to talk about it. So they sat down with the person who's Ben, who is the, the creator of the Anglican package altogether. So he's actually taking requests, basically. I sent him a reading list that I use for our postulants. And, and for our ordination exams. And he was like, all right, I'm going to go through and compare these. And so he's adding stuff in, and he probably isn't going to be taking anything out. But I wanted to get him here for a few minutes to show you what is available. Hopefully some of you have continuing education funds that you might be able to leverage or use. But continuing education is something that, that we have encouraged, and we'll be encouraging some more. The Commission on Ministry is going to turn its attention toward that. What are some of the opportunities for you besides going off somewhere and doing a DMIN, which is great, but you might not have that opportunity. But how do you keep your mind sharp, keep your keep your nose in scripture and, and exploring the heritage that's in front of us? So Ben, come on up and tell us what the opportunities are here with the Logos package. Thanks. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. If you don't mind, I'd just like to begin with prayer. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Blessed Lord, who caused all holy scriptures to be written for our learning, grant us so to hear them, read, mark, learn, and inwardly digest them, that we may embrace and ever hold fast the blessed hope of everlasting life, which you have given us in our Savior Jesus Christ, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. It's wonderful to be here with you. I want to thank the Reverend Dr. Justin Holcomb for inviting us, the diocese for hosting us, the bishop for hosting us. Um, the center is wonderful. The staff has really been great and helpful, so thank you all uh, for having us. My name is Ben, as Justin said. Uh, I am uh, an, a, an aspirant for holy orders in the Diocese of uh, Olympia in Washington State. Logos brought me on uh, about two and a half years ago to start and manage their Anglican packages. We had done a, a package and, and a kind of line of business for Roman Catholics, and they wanted to do something for Anglicans as well. And so I did my master's <coughs> degree at Regent College in English, his late Anglican history, and so they brought me on to kind of work and develop that. So I've been working uh, for a while to kind of um, build packages, talk with people, build relationships, see what kind of resources are helpful, what kind of resources I, uh, resources I know in my own study have been helpful. And so that's what we got. So that's what I want to show you today. Um, so, so just to start off, as that prayer says, you know, we need to hear, read, learn, and read and digest the scriptures. And as Justin said, you guys are doing a lot of a lot of other stuff: hospital visits, funerals, uh, weddings, pastoral visits, spiritual direction, and then just the administration of your of your churches. And so you, that doesn't leave often a lot of time for preparation for sermons or for preparation for other pastoral care. And so Logos, we know that, and so I've tried to, we, in general, Logos has tried to design packages that will uh, give pastors and, and uh, priests back their Saturdays, in a sense, and help them to get the resources that they need faster, uh, not taking all the work out of it, there's still some wrestling with the, the text that needs to be done, but uh, take, take some of the busy work out of it, and then also give tools that will help better study the text and deliver better insight. Uh, to you as you study. So with that, we'll just go into the software a little bit. Uh, just gonna cover some kind of major highlights. There's lots more that I just won't be able to get into today. 
So this is the home page. Um, it has this is kind of designed to be like a, uh, a theological USA Today. So we populate this with different resources. So we've got videos from our, we have Faith Life TV. Uh, we, we do verse art, which is really cool. Uh, we have a really good design team and they do every day they do the verse of the day and they try to make the art kind of reflect the theme of the verse. Um, there's blog posts, they pull, we pull kind of things from your resources that might be interesting to you. So if you're, you want to see some more about something that interests you, you can go ahead and do that. Um, so that's kind of, we often tell people, if you just started up, you know, your logos and you look through that, you might find something interesting and kind of learn a little bit about the Bible or theology for the day. We've also got on the homepage right here uh, a prayer list. So you can create your own customized prayer lists. And so you can, you know, if you have a, a list of people you pray for every day or you have, you know, a parish prayer list that you have, you can put that up there. It's a helpful reminder. And then below that we have our reading plan. So you can create a reading plan for, you know, the Bible if you want to read through the Bible in a certain period of time or any book in your library. So if you want to try to, if you need some book you need to get through, you can set up a reading plan. It will tell you, you know, this is what you need to read every day to finish that book in, you know, two months or whatever, whatever it is. The other thing I want to show you, this is kind of our, one of our main features, is the, the search box up at the top, we call it the go box. Um, so you can enter any passage or any topic in there, hit go, and Logos goes throughout your whole library and finds everything that you own, uh, anything in your library that, that has anything to do with that passage or that topic, and, and brings it back together in a helpful guide that organizes, um, that, organizes that content for you. So that's, so that's something, and we're going to talk a little bit later about that guide, but, but one, another way to start for, for folks that, that you, for us, that use the, the lectionaries, is if you see this box here, we have kind of two lectionary boxes. So one, at the top one has the RCL on it, so for the Sunday uh, readings, and then the bottom has the, the Book of Common Prayer Daily Office lectionary. And if you use other lectionaries, uh, you, you can prioritize other ones as well. And if you just click on the proper number for the day, it's going to populate a whole uh, kind of list of resources that have to do with that. So, so for example, you know, here you see the lectionary. It's got all the readings. If you scroll down, it's going to have a, you know, all the readings in whatever translation you'd like it to have. Uh, it's got the liturgical color of the day or of the for the you know feast day. If you click on it, if it's not going to be All Saints on that Sunday, you can click on the the regular proper and go back up like that. And so, um, so that's kind of the starting point. And then if you move over here, this is the biblical text. And again, you can, um, you can choose your preferred translation. So I have the NRSV up there, but I also have the ESV, the RSV, the King James Version. And that will help you, so you can get right into the text, whichever reading you want to look at, you can click on that and jump over there. And then below this is your preferred commentary. So you can pick the, the one you like the most. And check this out, as you're kind of, as you're scrolling through reading the text, the commentary scrolls with you. So you don't lose your place. It's right there for you. Um, so that's really cool. Um, another thing, so we're looking at the passage here, the gospel reading for this Sunday, which is John 11, 32 through 44. It's when Lazarus dies and, and Jesus comes and, and raises him from the dead. You're scrolling through, so you can see here, I've, I've highlighted this. You can highlight the text, pick out different words. There's like, I don't know, 100 different highlighting styles that you can use. So here, I've, I've done that, and I'm just gonna show you another cool feature of the software. If you look over to the right, there's the info box. So if, I'm, if I've been reading, and I'm looking, and I've noticed, oh, this word disturbed, and word move <coughs> is, um, they're similar words. Maybe I wanna find out a little bit more about what what's different about them, why they were translated differently. So if you hover over the word, notice on the, on the right side, Logos pulls up, you know, hours of, of kind of word study, Greek word study, theological word study for you. So if, if you go over there and scroll down, at the top there's going to be entries from lexicons and, and uh, you know, theological dictionaries like the TDNT. And then it gives you the translations from the other, um, oops, gives you translations of how the other scriptures translated it, so King James, NRSV, ESV. And then it gives you the Greek words, so... Um, if you, if, you know, you don't, you know, it gives you pronunciation. So some of, I mean, I, I know for myself when I learned Greek, uh, 
I loved it, it was great, but now I'm not so great at it. And every once in a while I'm like, that'd be really cool to, to remember that and kind of dig in, but I don't want to pull it out and do everything again. So this can just give you a quick glance at that. And I don't know if you can hear it, but you can do it. You can do a pronunciation as well, so if you can't remember how to, how to pronounce it, we've got that in there for you. And so that's cool, because you can just quickly look at, you know, what's the difference between disturbed and moved? So if you look here at disturbed, you see that, uh, and you may maybe already know this, but there's a kind of aspect of anger in there that's not just disturbed, but kind of angry. And if you looked at moved, moved is just kind of a regular disturbed, troubled kind of a thing. So that's pretty cool because you, you can show people or you can talk about how you know, here's Jesus, he's faced with the death of his friend, and he's angry about it. He's angry about death, uh, which is important because God is angry about death. And so that's a great point to make to your congregations, uh, that it's okay and even right that we're angry when we're in the face of death. And so that's a, that's a cool, um, a really important tool. There's other Greek and, and Hebrew studies you can get more in depth, but if you just want to kind of get an overview, um, that's where to start. And then I mentioned before about the Go box, so if you put in a passage or topic, uh, hit go, it'll pull up this report for you. I've got that report pull up here. Um, and this is our passage guide. So, like I said, this goes through your whole library, finds everything that has to do with the topic or, or passage that you're looking at, brings it back and organizes it into, you know, either type of resource or, you know, theme or whatever it is. And so let's just scroll through here a little bit. The top level is commentaries. So, again, you can set your preferred commentaries. And if you click on that, um, it's going to jump right to the so I've got like the, the ancient Christian commentary series here. It'll jump right to that, and you can you know read that through. And if you pick on, click another one, it'll, it'll do the same. So that's all your commentaries. You can see more or less. And then you go down, and it's got your own content. So if you upload your own notes, your own books, that kind of a thing, that's going to show up right there. Cross-references. This is great, because you can just, if you hover your mouse over the top of one of these references, it's going to show you the passage right there, so you don't have to flip, nice. flip back and forth. Um, and almost any passage you see, if it's a scripture reference, you mouse over it, and it'll 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 give you the, the passage right there. So this fact, this part is is my kind of my favorite part. Um, it's the ancient literature section. So this goes through, uh, for example, the church fathers, and looks at every time the church fathers talk about the passage you're working on, the topic you're working on. Every time they quote it directly, every time they allude to it, every time they talk about the topic that the scripture is on, and give it to you right there, which is, uh, that's great, I love the fathers, like studying the fathers. Um, it also gives you, in the ancient literature section, Jewish literature, so other, you know, other Jewish sources that might have to do with the topic you're looking at or give you some background. It's got Old Testament pseudepigrapha references that might be helpful. Josephus, Philo, if, if that's relevant here. Um, might give you New Testament Apocrypha references as well. Gives you parallel passages from you know other other places in the text and the synoptics. Gives you literary typing. So what kind of document is this? Is this what kind of sub you know sub part of the document are you looking at? This next tool is kind of one of the coolest ones that we've developed, which is cultural concepts. So often you come across an idea in scripture that you might think you know or we, we have a, a concept in our own culture, uh, but it's different than the first century culture. And so we've created kind of an ontology um, for, for cultural ideas that you can look through. So for example, in the Old Testament, if you're reading about covenant, uh, we might have a certain, certain understanding of covenant that's different than the Old Testament. So if you click this, so here we've got crying and resurrection. If you click that, it's gonna open up a fact book entry that's gonna give you you know, all the scriptures that use that content, uh, that, that concept, it's gonna give you more information about how that concept worked in the ancient world, that kind of thing. So it's an easy way to get some background. There's outlines, um, biblical people, so we've gone through and tagged every person in the Bible. So if you're reading a passage here, it's kind of clear, but if you're like, which, which Mary was that again? You can hit this, and it'll tell you which Mary it was. Um, for a lot of them, like here with Lazarus, we have family trees, so you can kind of trace that back. If you scroll down, we've got pictures. So, you know, Bethany, um, you know, where this takes place. We've got maps, we've got things. So here's a tomb, picture of tombs, um, other things like that. We've got more media resources. 
So it's pretty cool. You can kind of from right here, you can do a lot of work. Oh, we've got maps. So we've got maps that function almost like Google Maps. You can scroll in, scroll out, kind of move your move around a little bit. And so, you know, if you spend your time kind of digging through just this section, you're gonna have a lot of your sermon prep done or you know, whatever you're whatever you're preparing for, your midweek homily or whatever that is. Something else that's really cool, and you'll like this. Uh, if, you, if you're looking at your lectionary and you want to take a look at the psalm, you can set it so if you click on the psalm, it opens it up in the, in the Psalter from the prayer book. So we've got that broken out. And you can just, you know, there it is for you. If you want to look at that, you can you copy this and put it in there. You know, if you do a pamphlet rather than use the, the print version. So that's pretty cool. Speaking of the Psalms, this is an example. Let's me kind of give an example of uh, one of the cool features that we've been developing for our new, for Logo 6. Um, we've been working on interactive media. And so one of the, we've got all kinds of interactive media, but one of them is the Psalms Explorer. So this is a visual of all the Psalms uh, categorized by, by type. And this, the, each Psalm is a circle, and the size of the circle is the, is the length of the Psalm. So that just gives you a cool visual right there, and then you can you can sort them. So if you're looking at, say, we're talking about grief, so you can sort them. Oh, here's all the songs that deal with grief, and, and that's pretty cool because just visually, obviously, lament songs deal with grief, but there's a couple praise songs that deal with grief. Um, Thanksgiving songs, and then you can you can you know filter it further. You can say, well, which ones are by David? So that's pretty cool. And then from there, if you're like, well, I want to dig a little bit more into that psalm, let me click on that, and it's going to give you the psalm with you know if there's parallelism in it, it's marked. If you're looking at the chiastic structure, that's marked. Um, if you want to see the Hebrew next to it, there's that. So it, it allows you to kind of dig in further. It, it kind of customizes as much time as you into it as far as you want to go. That's where it is. And then we click X and go right back to where we started. Um, there's also really cool features if you if you copy and paste it into a Word document, that the logo is going to footnote it for you automatically. You can create your bibliographies through here. So you probably aren't writing a lot of papers that you need to do that with. But if you have friends who are in seminary or whatever, that's a huge time saver. So like I said, there's lots more to talk about. Um, Tony and I will be out at the booth and lo would love to show you more what's going on, more of what you can do, more of how you can use it specifically for your ministry. Um, so to go back here to the home page. There's a couple of things I want to kind of leave you with on this. One is, um, this is, it syncs across all your mobile devices, right? So if you've got an iPad and you're at a coffee shop and you're taking notes or highlighting the text, when you get home, it's going to show up right on your, on your laptop. Um, you can just pick up your study from where you left off. Um, it's it's one-time license, so it's not a subscription. You buy these books, you own them for life, so, and you can put them on as many computers as you want. So if you've got you know a laptop and a, and a desktop and a you know Mac or whatever, you can do that. It works on Mac, PC, iOS, Android. Um, I can say. Lost my train of thought. Um, the best way that you can kind of get into Logos is with a base package. So like Justin said, we designed these Anglican base packages, taking the key tools of the software and paired them with, with sources that are, are really relevant to Anglicans. And I've tried to make it fairly balanced uh, between kind of Anglo-Catholics and, and Evangelicals in terms of resources. Uh, although I have complaints from either side, and Anglo Catholics think it's too evangelical, and Evangelicals think it's too Anglo yeah. Catholic. Probably not surprising. Uh, yeah. So, uh, so, yeah, and, and a little bit of uh, broad church in there, too. Um, so, so, we have six levels of packages, and I want to kind of uh, just highlight three of them for you. So our gold package is kind of the baseline that we recommend. It's got all the tools that we have. It's got everything, if you want to be able to do everything I showed you today, the gold package is the one you want to get. Um, that's kind of the, we call, I call it the curates library. So that's kind of your basic library there. And then we, the one above that is platinum. So that's kind of a more of a 
just it's got the same functions and features, but much more resources. So higher level commentary.